Well, welcome to Aberdeenshire. We're here right on the edge of the Cairngorms National Park and this rolling countryside holds a secret. It's here that the highest grade, that's the most extreme metamorphism within the Dalradian succession in the Grampian Highlands are to be found. So let's seek out amongst this landscape some outcrops that tell the story. So that bare hill up there is our first target. Let's go and look at the rocks up there. Well, it's not just forestry work that's cleared this hillside. The storms have brought down these trees as well. Well, anyway, let's go up to the top and find some outcrop. So this is Queen's Hill, some outcrops amongst all this devastation. I think there's some just over here. Let's take a look. So, some rocks poking out amongst all this trashed woodland. And they're pretty pale. Let's take a closer look at them. So it's almost all quartz, a bit of feldspar. This is a metamorphosed sandstone, but because it's got so few minerals and they're pretty simple chemically, it's not going to be a great deal of use for us in trying to determine the metamorphic conditions. So let's scout around and see if we can find something better, something with more chemistry. In other words, a metamorphosed mud rock or clay stone, a pelite. Well, that's more like it. A bit more variety in these rocks. Yes, there's still quartz feldspathic layers in it, but there are also these more micaceous layers coming through as well. So this is a metamorphosed pelite. So, what about the layering? Well, I can see that it's running down like this, coming through. It's made of these quartz and feldspar lenses, very elongate lenses. This is very typical of rocks that we call migmatites. Frozen in the act of partial melting. So these rocks have got so hot they've melted. Okay, well that's one texture. Let's scout around some of these hillsides further along the valley here and see if we can find other textures within metamorphosed sediments. Well, this is Court Hill. It took a bit of hammering in the storm, but fortunately we can go over to the lee side and it's not quite so blitzed as this. Well, these woods are full of these informal bike trails. They provide access up through the trees, but they also provide some quite nice outcrop on the rock features that people cycle over. Let's continue up and see what we can find. So it's a nice clean outcrop here. We get the pine needles off it. So really classic migmatite textures with this banding these little white or pale stringers. So we can see the process of nice formation, frozen in action in here. Classic migmatites.
Okay, well let's continue along our ridge line now to just above the village of Dinnit, a place called Scar Hill. It's a really important site that takes these migbatites to the next level. Well, here's some clean outcrop. Finally, amongst all the moss. Well, pretty coarse grain, nice. Very speckledy, lots of these feldspar porphyroblasts in it. Very crude banding. Have a look, have a look carefully, there are little streaky sort of lenses in it. Of material in here, little xenoliths almost floating in this sea of granitic gneiss. So, in extreme situations, you just get this granitic material with xenoliths of more refractory metasediment floating around in it. So these gneisses, well, they're pretty high grade, aren't they? Almost granites, uh, really far gone migmatites. On the early geological maps, these rocks are marked A primed, which stands for ancient granitic gneiss. So what pressure and temperature conditions do these migmatites record? So let's plot temperature against pressure and show metamorphic reactions for pelites. The three alumina silicates pot like this. And ours contain silimonite. That's over here. Hot rocks. Other reactions narrow things down further. The pelites contain biotite and case feldspar with silimonite, which puts us here. So Sally Goodman estimated that our rocks lie somewhere around here on the PT plot. In another study, using trace element concentrations in different minerals, Baker estimated the conditions to be here, broadly similar. So we have peak metamorphic conditions of temperature and pressure, and because pressure relates to the depth the rocks are at, we can calculate a geothermal gradient, which works out at a rather rapid 28 degrees centigrade per kilometer. Now, thickening crust should have a weaker gradient than this. So for our rocks at their peak pressures, they've overheated by around 200 degrees centigrade. So we have these silimonite case bar nices. And these peak metamorphic conditions have been dated nearby at around 465 million years ago. So this is when this Grampian crust achieved its highest temperatures. So what's the origin of the heat source for the metamorphism in these metasediments? Well, back here on Queen's Hill, there's one possible solution. Up there, the hill of Mortlick, well that's granite. And if you look at the geological map for the region, you can see that the whole area is punched through with granites. So could these granites be the origin of the heat that's cooked these metasediments? So I've come down to the side of the River Dee here at Canvas May. What are those rocks under the bridge?
So these rocks are granite with undeformed igneous textures. So the granites have intruded after all the deformation. And consequently, the granite yields an intrusion age that is younger than the peak conditions of metamorphism in the downraging metasediments. OK, so the granites are far too young, so there must be another solution to our problem. Well, what else could be going on? Well, that hill at the back is Morven, and that's something different. On the geological map, the rocks of Morven are shown in green. So what are they? Well, they're amphibolites, coarse metagabros. And although they contain very little uranium, they can be matched with others nearby that have been dated at around 470 million years. That's within error, the same age as the peak metamorphism in the metasediments. And it's not just Morven that holds metabasic rocks. The metasediments themselves include lots of mafic intrusions of various age relative to the deformation of metamorphism. Well, it's another wooded hillside up in front. But with the winter storms, let's see if some collapsed trees give us some outcrop up there. Let's go and have a look. So, some outcrop from where a tree's been pulled off in the storms. And I can see in these rather nice fresh outcrops in here that we've got amphibole, a few speckled garnets and some plagioclase. So we're dealing with an amphibolite. It's a metamorphosed basic igneous rock. Okay first part of the story in here but what else can I see in the outcrop well there are these little stringers of leucosome of pale granitic composition material that is intruding into the metabasic the amphibolite okay let's see what else we can find as we walk around these outcrops freshly prepared by the storm Lots of amphibolites in various deformation states, some apparently intruded very early in the history, some later, with preserved magmatic layering strung out by the strain. So the history here is one of deformation and metamorphism, but also the intrusion of basic magma into the crust as it's thickening providing excess heat to cook these meta sediments. For mountain belts, this is an unusual relationship, but that's for another video. It's the fuel relationships and the dating together that tell the story of these Aberdeenshire migmatites.